Today's conference was about uh, how we can make the EU services market an engine for growth. So Commissioner Jankowska said, clearly the time is right to do more to ensure that the services market reaches its full potential. So in 2012, the Commission called for just that, more ambition implementation of the directive. When I took office last year, eight months ago, I asked my services to analyse the progress achieved. And I must say that the results are very disappointing. Despite the significant potential, only few member states carried out additional reforms. As a business, I should be able to go anywhere in Europe and provide my services in the same way as I do it in my home country, without having to spend weeks on administrative formalities and petty bureaucracy. And as a consumer, I should be able to buy the services or hire the professional I like wherever I want to in Europe, without being discriminated on the basis of where in Europe I live. What we were looking at was the economic potential of the services market and how we can bring down barriers and therefore increase growth and, Im and improve jobs in Europe. What we've seen over the last three years, in fact, is that the reforms that Member States have made are rather meagre and that we've only seen a 0.1% growth in EU GDP. The single market for services is extremely important because it can create jobs and growth. Uh, it's less integrated than the goods market, but still it counts for 9 out of 10 new jobs. It is really important to have this uh, single market strategy because it is very important for consumers to have the benefits of a real, genuine single market. Currently this is not the case because there are too many barriers that consumers face in order to benefit from the internal market. Therefore, we would like to see in this internal market strategy uh, a real strong enforcement of the rule that prohibits territorial discrimination. This internal market of services has very big role in job creation and also in innovation sector. And that is why we cannot shelter well-established businesses at the expense of newcomers, new uh, SMEs who want to enter to market and grow. We need to accept that innovation comes from the competition and that's why regulatory environment must be level and fair for newcomers and uh, old performers. We don't need to do all, uh, all sectors at once. Let's look at the main sectors where we really expect um, benefits. The first, the main benefits from uh, an enhanced single market, which is retail, business services and construction. What we need in particular is regulations that make sure that uh, living in a single market that includes 30 countries in the end, there are actually rules that uh, apply in the same way to workers everywhere. That there are no loopholes for companies to use for social dumping. I think what's important today is to realize that we talk about regulatory um, uh, changes that need to take place and they to some extent need to start in the member states. What I would encourage the Commission to do is allow bilateral, multilateral initiatives by member states to agree, for example, on a common uh, data protection law or on a law on uh, how to make the banking system more stable, as was done with the banking union, or on the regulation of highly regulated professional services. Vice President Katainen came to close the conference. He underlined that these barriers that we identified clearly are stopping micro and small enterprises from growing and from scaling up, and that we need to be able to do this for the EU growth potential and for improved jobs in the services market and in the internal market as a whole.